but be present because if you don't attend then they can then use your non-attendance as delinquency and then assume the power of attorney that they already have in place to foreclose on you and that's what they do your strongest weapon is your honor and your competency never ever run away from them demanding I know it's unreasonable but you're having to appear in court please read the notes okay Looks like we uh, we have a silent Q and A tonight. Um, That's right. Yeah, if uh, if if we may, uh, we're we're making a couple of changes to the uh, uh, the, the the trust IDs um, and and stuff like that. Um, now that's uh, that's an important issue too because we feel that um, in the local side of communities is we want to be able to have. Uh, the abilities for each community through uh, getting together through trusteeship of getting those essential skills such as artists together uh, that can help out those who uh, can't issue the trust IDs. I think that's important. I think that's, again, building the communities and, and building those skills. Um, mm -hmm. We didn't talk about IT. Obviously, one of the big issues for us is IT. The IT resources behind UK need to be conveyed and they need to be conveyed to people who are willing to consider that they are as much stewards of it as I've been. So, again, I call out to people who have those kind of skills to make themselves known uh, and, and step up to the plate. Um, there's a question here, uh, and by the way, um, the response to my comment about um, about uh, eating love was, uh, what if you don't have a garden? Well, that... I mean, hello. I mean, if <laughs> uh, there are people who have, have land, right? There's people who have land. But right? if I may there's, on that, is yeah. that there are ways, and actually we've, uh, uh, there's others and we've seen. Uh, we, uh, we were just at a, a farm show a few weeks back, and they now have a thing called the Urban Garden. It's essentially, it's an earth box for indoors. I, I mean, folks, let's face it. Uh, just do a YouTube uh, uh, search for the wheat grass trucker, and I I really don't. Uh, it's you can't listen to excuses of I can't do it because this guy is going down the the, the road all day, growing wheat grass on his passenger seat, and uh, he's able to juice and uh, get that high nutrient, uh, efficient efficient, uh, you know, juice that you need it. It's nutrient dense. So again, is or growing at home? Again, it's everyone's taken the path of least resistance because of a, a lot of the things that's in food. So once you start to get off of sugar, for an example, uh, then you see that those those addictions or dependence starts to fall away. I also, and, and then you're going to get more energy as well. Very good points, Brian. Um, there's a question here um, on the chat. While I understand your point about DNA, I must ask whether the junk DNA is really junk or if it's not understood. Yes, <clears throat> it's a label. And um, I would love you to read The Journey of UCA, which is on ukadia.com. There is a chapter there that talks about microtubules and what that DNA uh, may well be. Um, uh, so... Let's keep going on questions that are coming up through this chat. Um, Paris B says, please define the difference between appearance and attendance. I'm um, using those words. I mean, effectively, I'm saying if they send you a summons to the courthouse, go. I can't be clearer than that. And please go and read the link that they put in there for you. Just just go. If they send you a summons, go. Read the notes on, on handling yourself in court and, and try and at least be competent before you go. And if you don't feel competent, then again, read the notes. And, and I've said this to some people, sometimes we are not competent enough to stand on our own two feet. And if you're uncertain of all these things, you may be someone that needs to get an attorney. I mean, not every attorney is... And when you do get an attorney, you are declaring yourself incompetent in front of the law. But if that's the truth, that's the truth. But please read the notes, please. 
Um, uh, guest 7, Frank, are we joining the controllers when we join One Heaven since it's their creation? Uh, no. No, no, it's not. Firstly, it's, it's... We're not joining the controllers. We're dealing with people that took the ideas of the ancients and said that the ancients said that life is a dream, we're immortal beings, reincarnation exists, and then they corrupted it for their own self. So we're dealing with, I guess, um, incompetent stewards. No, we're not. We, what we're doing is we're restoring the law. And by restoring the law, we're honouring the history of the law and, and fixing those things that have been corrupted. So no, we're not. Um, there's a question here. Uh, question is, file UCC form before EDP or do not file UCC at all and just file the EDP. We are no longer supporting the UCC process, not because the documents that were produced were wrong, but that it is complete waste of time. A complete waste of time. If you want to go down that path, that is your choice. The originals are still on the system, but but I, I, I suggest to anyone that still wants to perfect that process, that is entirely up to you. Remember, you're filing as a trust, so in no way are you jeopardizing yourself. Remember, if you've ever heard of anyone that's had a problem, it's because they filed them as a Roman person. So don't. Uh, it's up to you. But that's the answer to that. Um, Great, Frank. Uh, why don't we uh, take a call from uh, someone yeah. in the queue? Uh, right. We're going to talk to uh, Liberty Felix up next. Uh, you're on the air. Hi, Frank. Hi. Uh, I'm not quite up to speed. I'm only up to the third introductory um, archive listening and wanted to jump ahead. Uh, I just would like to say that uh, you certainly are resonating uh, with uh, the path that I've come to up to this point. Uh, there's a couple of issues that keep cropping up that uh, I'm sure you you have uh, have to deal with. You've done a very good job in uh, making a, a very honest uh, approach in dealing with questions of um, skepticism. Um, I'm not sure you can help me or not in my specific uh, entanglement, but... Uh, the path that I've followed has brought me to opt out with much less of a comprehensive uh, approach that you have than than what you're doing, and I'm, it just marvels me that you're you're ambitious uh, enough to to work this towards a a world association, and yet at the same time I think that is going to raise eyebrows. Uh, my particular predicament is that uh, by opting out of Social Security, ditching my number. Um, I've become a lot more free, but um, again, with less comprehensive understanding than what you're presenting. Uh, but while my freedom has been uh, useful, it's also brought me severe job discrimination. So how do I approach, yes. how do I approach all these um, uh, folks that are trying to uh, make a buck or you know be productive, but feel like they can only do it in this Roman system? And how can I uh, bolster my position with them? Well, they're all good questions. And I, I, I'm going to use the community as, as an answer. If you have, I'm going to ask this as a question, so I hope you can give me feedback. Uh, give me a second. Sure. If, you, if, if you have a, a, a local community where you know, and these people were prepared to trade with you, and you had someone who was a mechanic, a baker, a farmer or, or vegetable producer, um, uh, someone that could provide you with uh, clothes, fuel, energy, building maintenance, and, and any kind of administrative duties. If you had a community like that, you would pretty much have all the essential needs that you need. Would you agree? Yes. If that community existed and it could exist with 10 or 15 members, 
Would you agree that the vast majority then of the energy that you're dedicating could be focused on the welfare of the community and not propping up the Roman system? Would you agree? Sure. So the only issue then isn't so much um, how do you survive in the Roman system when you're almost at a kind of ghost status, yeah? Um, it's a question of how do I stop being an island but, but uh, work with other people who may want to, to be free but are also approaching from being an island. And once we're together, how do we, if you like, minimise our footprint into the Roman system knowing that the system is just playing games? Does that make sense? It does. It certainly, again, resonates that uh, I've certainly have felt like an island. But it, the, 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 here's the exciting part. Eucadia is not asking people to go off and live in some commune, right? Right. But it is a transition that's, uh, it requires this knowledge and the sharing, but also a, um, I guess, a, um, a, a liberal embracing of, of the new ideas and, and patience with the, the transition. Well, good luck with your reading, because we're going to keep going with questions. Good luck with your reading. And always feel free on these calls to call back in and let us know how you're going. All right? Sure. Great. Thanks so much. Uh, next up is uh, Ron. We got uh, we we got Ron on. Ron, you're live. Hi, Frank. Ron here. Hey, Ron. Hi. Hey. Um, a, a great call tonight, especially the part about, you know, one man with a superior idea can change the world. Uh, lack of fear, stuff like that. <clears throat> um, a movie comes to mind that brings all of these points together, and it's V for Vendetta. He outlines everything that you've talked about tonight and actually puts it into uh, existence. Uh, fear, ideas, words, words don't die, ideas don't die, stuff like that. It was written by the the brothers that did the the Matrix series, also. Yeah, I, I I've seen it, and it reminded me the other day. And I'm actually going to go and see if I can rent it out because it's an excellent movie. Um, caused a bit of a stir when it came out, blowing up Parliament. Um, <laughs> look, one of the things is they do give us public notice, and oh. it's actually it, it's part of of their argument that they're staying uh, lawful in, in the divine um, balancing. And in a sense, they are. When they give us a divine notice that we live in a machine and that we effectively, to the machine, are nothing more than a source of energy or, want a better word, a battery, and they call that system, that movie, The Matrix, so that everyone keeps talking about we live in the matrix, we live in the matrix, we live in the matrix, and yet no one <laughs> steps up and says, how do we get out of the matrix in a comprehensive way? Then, then in a sense, they're saying, well, we gave you the public notice, and if the vast majority of you are perfectly happy to live in the matrix, so be it. Uh, so thank you for that. Appreciate that. Good, good movie, V. We're, it is. We're getting out. Absolutely. Good. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, I mean that's a it's a very interesting point, and uh, it, it's something I've been into looking into through symbolism for years, and and seeing about uh, yeah, movies are used as public notice. Uh, I just recently watched a, a movie called Unstoppable. Now it, it's interesting when you start to see the blatant infancy of how some of this uh, uh, foreshadowing is used uh, in movies. It's uh, it's Lark. Uh, this movie, for example, has uh, the gematria is always used. So uh, the train that is uh, in this movie is based off of true events <clears throat> of uh, a train that was called the Crazy 88s. So it was a quadruple eight uh, call sign for this train that uh, got loose from a, a yard and then uh, was about to create a disaster. Anyway. The heroes of the movie, of course, save the town, stop the train. But the issue is the 
call sign.